Hi everyone, welcome back to another Minecraft video. This video will mainly focus on preparing for the Emerald Skyscraper time lapse. So let's get started. So first thing before we get really started is there's been a lot that's happened since the last episode. It's not really visible stuff. It's mainly just traded villagers and then restocking all the supplies. So let's say, take the villagers for example. They have a lot of meat. So I, ran, I started running out of meat and then to do that I needed to rebreed all the cows and pigs then kill them all again to get more stuff. Then I had to grow all the farms, keep having the, the farms. And then for the cartographers and part of the Fletchers, that was the bamboo and sugarcane farm. So I was AFK for about 12 real life hours total. And then this farm hasn't really produced much. And we will be building two farms actually, an iron farm, and we'll also be building an a very industrial bamboo farm. I know there's an iron farm over here somewhere, but it's too far away, and at the right distance I have to play it to get 60 FPS. It's not really loaded half the time. And, what else? Ah, the clerics. They have glass, so I went to gl Glass Town and got about six sock chalk boxes of sand, which is then smells into glass to get some glass bottles. And believe me, I've had to fill this up quite before. And gold blocks. Well, I have so many, because for half the time I was AFK in here, 12 hours, eight of those hours were also allowed to make films AFK at the gold farm. And I actually have a time lapse of me crafting all the gold nuggets into gold ingots and then gold blocks. So I think we'll start with that. And then we'll get back to me building an iron farm. Just before I go to the iron farm, there is one last thing I have built. And it's at Yamal Squires here at the construction site, which is over here somewhere, here it is. It's this storage area. Previously there were a bunch of shock box loaded around on whatever floor I was at on the Emerald Skyscraper. But now I have proper storage up here. And yep, I've definitely made quite a few ammo blocks. And there's another line of them back at the compound. And I want quite a few different double chests. Glowstone, I've also been trading a lot with that. And there's other construction materials which I used in the in the skyscraper. And then there's a lot of stone smooth stone blocks. And glowstone. So this is what the glowstone is used for. It's for these wall sides here. I like to think of them as retaining walls or embankment walls. And it just lights it up so no monster spawn. I'll just put copper but I just want to have glowstone to make it light up. Just like this glowstone on the on the carpet here, and all the other materials are either used for when I eventually get this road to go down there, and for different parts of the interior of the Emerald Skyscraper. There are quite a few different blocks in the Emerald Skyscraper. There's ladders, glass, emerald blocks for sure, gold, yellow stained glass for this ring, green stained glass, and all the lanterns and chains. That's the iron farms for. Not only do I often craft hoppers and need more iron, it's also for things like this when I need change and lanterns. Lanterns themselves do need iron nuggets. So I do need iron a lot. That's why I'm building the iron farm. And this will be a proper one. The one looks notable built, it might work, but like I said, I don't have a very good computer. So I'm stuck at 9 chunks if I want to get 60 FPS. And I'd rather choose a good frame rate for you guys than a higher frame rate but 
I'm Playboy FPS. And that's it for the store, Joey. So now it's iron farm time. To build this iron farm, we'll need quite a few different materials. So I'm going to collect them all, and then I'll see you at the construction site. As you might have guessed, an iron farm needs a few villagers. Three in this one. And in my villager breeder, I have exactly three villagers. However, I need to have at least two left in the villager breeder. So whenever I need them, I can breed more villagers. So first, I'm going to need to harvest from the farms. And then I can breed the villagers. Then I can take the three that I need. Okay, there should be at least five when I come back. If I have less than five, I'll need to keep breeding them. Well, there's one child. Problem, there's only four villagers. I'll need to do more farming. I've given them about eight stacks. Wait, is that another child? Yes! Oh, now I have enough villagers. Didn't even need those carrots. Either way, it's time to get them out of here. Oh, this is going to take a while. I have to do it two more times. At least I don't have to drag the boat back. I can just pick it up. I'm sure this is going to be quite boring for you guys. So I'm just going to cut. Do you want to have three villagers all out here? And the three villagers are here. Another thing I need for this farm is a zombie. And that's actually pretty perfect because it's night time now. I just need to find one. Here's a zombie. I just need to lower it back to the compound. There's also a skeleton. It's not what I want. One thing I should have done is switch to my non-thorns hour. So if it does hit me, I don't kill it accidentally. Another one of the materials for the iron farm is a name tag. And I watched the tutorial. So the name tag is for the zombie. So it doesn't despawn. I thought I should have built some kind of area for it to live in for now. Whatever. I'll just keep learning it. I'll grab some of my temporary blocks and build a little area for it. Well, now I have a problem. It's daytime. And the zombie has no helmet. And I'm just backing myself into a wall. Well, that went well. I killed it because I was just going to die anyway. I'll try again tomorrow night. And that gives me more time to complete a suitable structure for trapping it. Now I just need to clean up all the stuff that I built. Wait, what? Why are the villagers breeding here? I don't even know what's happening with these guys. I'll just leave them. What I can do right now is store all the stuff that I got from the other monsters and build a new area for the zombie whenever I get it. What I will do is grab some leather and make a helmet for the zombie so when, it, so when I do get a new one and hopefully I'll be able to pick up stuff I can build this helmet and I won't need to worry about a roof. I think the completed farm will have a roof but for the construction phase I won't have to worry about the zombie dying. Okay, here's how the zombie catcher will work. First I'll have an area fenced off and then I'll have some fence gates which are over here and then I'll have some fence gates, which are at both ends, here and then the other end. And I'll make it a bit bigger so the zombie doesn't have time to catch up to me. So about to here, then I'll have some fence gates, and those fence gates will be open with push plates behind them. And then these fence gates here, will have push plates here. So when I run in, they open behind me, and then shut. And then the zombie will follow me, coming in here, maybe. I think I might have to leave them open. And then the zombie will step on the push plates, and they'll shut the doors, the fence gates. And then I'll back out, and then these ones will shut. That's how the system's going to work. I'm not sure how well it'll go, but we'll see. And then when I catch the zombie, I'll have this leather cap, and the name tag in my inventory, and hot bar, so I can just... Use them on the zombie, if he'll pick this up. And then I'll have a zombie. Which I can do whatever I want with. I might end up having to use rails to get it in. But for now, we'll just see how I go. I might put rails around the fence. I will, let's do that. And one thing I will do, before I forget, is switch to my non-thorns diamond armor. The thorns enchantment armor is what deals damage to monsters when they attack you, or really anything else that attacks you. However, when you're trying to catch a monster on purpose, especially in close quarters, they will attack you and they will take damage. So I'll change to my other armor, my diamond armor. There are a few more materials I need to get, so I'll just cut to night time when I'm going to catch the zombie.
See you then. Okay, let's see how we go. It's night time and I have all the materials I need to get a zombie. There is one. That was pretty easy. So I load all over here, then I run back, fix the wall, and give the leather cap. I'll have to get it to pass over to pick it up. Doesn't look like it's one that picks up stuff. So we'll have to try again. Interesting. The night I actually want stuff to spawn, nothing spawns. What we'll have all night, I'll probably get something. I don't want a spider, but it's attacking me so it has to go. I, I think nothing is spawning because I'm close to the area. And look at that. I just flew away and then flew back and everything's here. However, that's a bunch of skeletons and spider is not what I wanted. I'm flying away. Too much. Ah, here's a zombie. Zombies. I think one zombie will be enough. But first, let's see if they take out the hat. Yes, that one did. That's what I wanted. And we can put the wall in place. Everything else can just stay outside. I'm not going to put the name tag on it until I get into the fence. Just because if something happens and it dies, I'll be wasting a name tag. I can get some other materials out, like whales. So first I go in, then it shuts. Then I'll open it again, and the zombie will come in. Once it goes in, everything shuts. Then I back out. Mission accomplished. On goes the name tag. Rails go in place, and then it goes in the coat. I have my armor, so nothing can happen to me. And then if I, then if it hits me, it, I don't have thorns, so it doesn't die. Come on, get in this minecart. How difficult will this be? Two very boring minutes later. All right, zombies in there. I'll just leave it at this. I'll leave the fence up in case something happens, and this mission is done. So I have all the materials I need, at least I think I do. I have a few extras because I'm going to build it a tiny bit differently, but the main design will be the same. So now it's time for construction. I just need to put all the mob drops I got in storage, and then we'll do construction. I'll put a link to the tutorial I used to build this farm in the video description, if I remember. So I have all the materials, let's build. Well first I'll make it day because... I have a habit of not letting up the areas and building and monsters keep spawning. The last thing I want is a creeper to blow up my stuff. And just a thought, the zombie will not burn in daylight. Alright, I have... So, first thing I need to do is rearrange a hot bar, because I, I went to get my shovel and there's no shovel, I got an axe. Right, dig a 9x9 nine nine hole one block deep. I'm going to make it align with my torches, because I have a habit of doing that. But otherwise it's the same thing. Or it is the same thing, just the way I aligned it. This is what I meant by daylight. Because there's no torches in this area now. So when that turns to night, if I fly away, monsters will spawn in this area. And maybe kill the villagers or do other things like kill a zombie. Next step is to get, well, place a shock box down for stuff I dig up. Get a fence gate, which over here over here now. Got a fence gates. Eight of them. I bought more than I needed. In a square in the middle of the hole. I guess that means... Yep, leave the middle one empty. So, this is the center. So, like this. Open them all. In case you can't tell, I had the video open on another monitor. Make an infinite water source, that's why they have two buckets instead of more. I guess that does make sense because why bring a lot of water buckets when you just can make an infinite water source? Ah, then add water to all four corners of this hole. So this is where the iron golems get pushed into this hole, and then they fall down. What happened? No, 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 no. No! What happened? Oh, 
happened? Well, I guess caps have durability and that durability goes down they're being used. Well, that sucks. Now I have another chore and I wasted a name tag. Well, this time I'm definitely going to add a roof to the finished farm. And I'll get my extra slabs that I bought and make a roof over the containment area because I'm not losing another zombie. I should have bought scaffolding too. I didn't. Never mind. It's not only is my store just over there, I have scaffolding and the materials for the for the cult farm. So I do have scaffolding. Well, it could have been worse. Could have been a creeper that blew up my area. The drummer could have got out and got the villagers. Or the villagers could have died or something. I do have a pretty good supply of name tags. I can just buy more from the librarians. I'm going to make another leather cap because even though the last one did fail, well, three leather caps, oops. Even though the last one did fail, it would it will help in case I accidentally leave the zombie out in the sun for a few minutes. I just never knew that. It's probably because I didn't have a zombie with a cap long enough in the sun. In fact, this one in the villager infector doesn't even have anything on because the entire area has a roof over it and it just stays in here. This one's pretty simple, I just have fence gates, the villagers just sit in these minecarts, and it never escapes. It has two layers of fences because iron golems like to go over there and kill it. I don't anymore. Where was I? Right, farm construction. So place water in all four corners of the farm, well this hole we built, and then go to the middle of the farm, build up four temporary blocks, and then place a composter. Three, and then a composter. What else? Then remove the temporary blocks. Well, I guess that's why they're called temporary blocks. And then add three to the side of the composter. Right, like this. Come on, fly. I placed scaffolding, but I can't because of the way all the blocks are. Now I try to door to the top temporary block. Ah, I need to go back to the stroke boxes. There's no point in showing you how I'm building it. Because you can just find the tutorial on YouTube. So I'll cut to one of something interesting. Five minutes later. And now there is something interesting. It's night time again. Zombie time for the third night. So I dig a hole in the wall again. So the zombie can get through. Then I just walk around searching for a zombie. And before I do anything with it. I drop the cap below it. To see if it picks it up. If it does. Great. I lower it in. If it doesn't. Then I search for another zombie. I think 50%, I think it's almost a 50% chance to be able to pick up stuff. So we have a good chance of finding one. If I can find anything, I'll just fly away and then back again. Here are some zombies. I think. Yep, that's a zombie. And if things get too hectic, like a bunch of creepers go over here, I can just fly away. Right, come in. Does it pick up the cap? Yes, it does. Okay, good. Now I lower it to the containment area. Okay, we're doing the fence. And it comes in. Shuts some of this. I back out. Things go bad. Eventually. There we go. It's in the minecart. Holding a redstone torch. Whatever. Don't need that. I have plenty of them. And it's on a cover, so in the daytime it won't burn. Even without a cap. Okay, zombie problem fixed, and I can just go straight to bed. And I'm not sure if zombies burn under slabs, but we'll find out soon. If they do, I can always get another one. No, I won't have to do this for a fourth time in a row. Now it's back to building. And I'm just going to cut to one that's not interesting. You know what, I'm not taking any chances. This, this area is getting a dirt roof. I really don't want to lose the zombie. Right. This is something interesting. It's time to get the villagers in here. This iron farm only needs three villagers. And I need to get them all into their beds. So first I need to build a railway that goes all the way on top of the beds. Can you place rails on the scaffolding? Yes you can. Okay. Well this will be easy. The tutorial never mentioned powered rails but I'm going to use a few just to get the villagers up here quickly. In fact the tutorial had the player push the villagers up in minecarts. But I have, more, I have plenty of resources, so I'm just going to use powered rails. Okay, this should be pretty easy. I just need to get all the villagers in here. Using this rail system. And I'm just going to add a few more glass blocks down here. So the mine coats don't fall out of the beds. And first, and let's see. 
Yep, I can get a villager in here. One villager down, two to go. The next thing I need to do is change the railways and then sign for another villager. This is pretty simple, I just need to carefully avoid teeing the villagers. Here we go. Two down, one to go. The railways can get changed and then it's your turn. Um, something is interesting. Apparently you can stack entities. Carefully hit. Nope. Um, hit. Nope. Wasn't close enough. There we go. Three villagers, all new bets. And now it's more boring construction time. See you then. Okay, here's something interesting again. It's time to get the zombie in the farm. The compost is where the zombie's gonna go, actually. I thought the compost was some kind of villager job thing that sp somehow spawns iron golems, but no. It's just a spot for the zombie to sit. Well, stand. Forever. The tutorial had a section on how to get the zombie in. However, we already have a zombie, which I prepared earlier. So we have a trapdoor like. The way we're going to get the zombie in is first, I let it out somehow, and then we I have it walk up into here, where like this, and then this scaffold will be gone. And then, while it's sh struggling to get up to me, I then open this trap door, it falls in, and then I shut the trap door. So we actually need to switch this trap door so the zombie falls in a different way. Like this. Now it's time to get the zombie out. I'm just going to destroy some of these rails. And then I can destroy the minecart when I'm ready. And the zombie will walk up these stairs. Then I run up here. Break the scaffolding and the zombie keeps following me. We have a um, problem related to recording this. As you can see the iron farm is complete, but the footage you just watched, well the video you just watched, does not show me completing the rest of the iron farm. And the reason for that is I'm recording this clip right now, quite a few real life hours after the footage that you haven't seen yet. However, the video is getting a bit too long for what I like to call an episode of this series. Over 20 minutes. So I'm going to, instead of making this an extended episode, which probably would get boring at the end, I'm going to split this episode into two different parts. This is going to be the end of part one, and then part two is going to come out next week, and that's going to have me completing the iron farm, and I'll build a bamboo farm, which I haven't built yet, as I'm recording this clip. So that is going to be the end of this video. I'll explain this as well at the beginning of part 2. That the footage you'll see in the beginning of part 2. I never mentioned this being after another episode. Because I was thinking this was going to be one episode. It just became too long and there's too much content for me to try and squeeze down to 20 minutes. So I've chosen to split it. So this is going to be the end of this video. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.